Joining us now with a preview is Erica Nigerian, UBS Equity Research Analyst for Large Cap Banks and Consumer Finance. And let's start with what we have today, because with such a drastic move lower in two-year yields and 10-year yields, you do see the money center banks being the biggest decliners here in the KBW Bank Index, Citigroup, JP Morgan, Bank of America, Wells, all down on the day. What is the ultimate impact of such a sharp move lower? So keep in mind that the money centers were huge outperformers so far this year massively outperforming the mid-cap bank index or the carry. And so I think the setup today is, oh gosh, September is alive. Not only is it live, there's an 88% chance that we're going to get our first cut sooner rather than later. And so this is a bit of a reversal of the trade. Everybody was hiding in the money center banks in terms of higher for longer. And now, given especially the valuation, and if you pair that with you know the coming elections, I think you're really starting to see that trade reverse and regional banks get a bid. It's interesting because you do see already that expectation starting to moderate for net interest income. If you see a move this much lower in rates, does it mean people want to borrow more? Or does it mean that there's just more pressure yet again? Yeah, so let me set up sort of the Goldilocks scenario that I think the market is hoping for in terms of what happens after the Fed cuts rates. So the Fed cuts rates and then regional banks will get relief in deposit costs. There's going to be some relief in terms of commercial real estate financing, at least a perception of relief, and then it's going to be enough to reinvigorate loan growth. I don't know if all of this will happen, but I think that's the initial knee-jerk reaction to the CPI print. Erica, the other thing that happens after the Fed cut rate, if they do it in September, mm -hmm. is we get either a Trump presidency or a centrist Democrat. What difference does that make to these big banks? Because if you watch, for example, Powell's testimony, the Democrats are grilling him on being, you know, they allege, a representative of the big banks, and that's yeah. a bad thing from their perspective. Here's the thing, though. We've got two headlines, um, essentially, this week, that even under this administration, we're seeing some relief in some of the regulatory constructs. So this whole Basel III endgame rule that would be really, really tough on capital for the banks, it, uh, Chair Powell said he'll repropose that. And there's nothing more effective for banks than time. Second, they're also dealing with changing how to calculate the GSIB surcharge, which is huge, right, because that could lower the capital requirement for big banks. That being said, if we do have a Trump presidency, that reaction is going to be, gosh, we need to buy the smaller banks because there's going to be potentially, um, you know, a logjam breaking in terms of consolidation. And so we're talking to you on the eve of earnings season for these big banks, which is a lot of specific catalysts yeah. there. But we have a question from a client saying, shouldn't a rate cut be good for bank portfolios? And that kind of bleeds into a question I wanted to ask, which is, what do the bank equities actually trade on? Because it feels like, again, we're in earnings season. We get some specific news. Maybe they trade on that for a day. But then it just feels like this entire sector goes back to being a macro story. It always is going to be a macro story. I think that while we can debate on the impact of the first cut, how many cuts, I think at the end of the day, you know, how to get more breadth in terms of portfolio managers owning more banks than just J.P. Morgan, B of A, and Wells is proving to the market that the risk reward isn't like the reward is underperforming the S&P and the risk is zero. And, you know, that's what you've seen over the past 15 years. You've seen, obviously, the global financial crisis and then last year's regional bank crisis. So it almost feels like for banks to truly pop off, um, to use a Gen Z term, um, they really need to go through a real recession and proving that it's an earnings issue, not a capital issue. Erica, there are some of your rivals here on Wall Street that believe that it is a market for Wall Street, that Wall Street banks might do better than the traditional Main Street banks in this environment because of this rebound in capital markets and investment banking. There's skepticism around that, too. How much do you believe that that could really fuel profits going into the end of the year? So I think there's definitely, I mean, the comps are super easy, right? The activity levels last year were super weak. Um, and so you could definitely see um, activity levels in banking and equity capital markets, debt capital markets especially, um, continue to be strong. But I also feel like, um, you know, the election is such a pivot point. And so you, you could see, whether it's loan demand or M&A activity, some sort of near-term pausing. And then once there's certainty, whoever wins, then you could really see 25 activity levels soar from here.